What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Flooring Podcast. Raj Dodger and Tony. What's going on, guys? We're back at it again, guys. Um, I wanted to go ahead and uh, I had some questions for you, Tony, because a lot of people are uh, wondering because of the, the type of content we create about quality, about pricing. People want to know more about these things. Uh, so I'm going to get right into it. Yeah. All right. So uh, the first thing that people have been asking is, how do you feel or how do we feel about flooring priced at one forty nine and two forty nine a square foot? And we're talking laminate or vinyl, either way. I mean, I think there's a time and a place for that kind of stuff. And if if maybe you're just hoping that it'll last a year, maybe three years max, then maybe that would be the fit, you know? Mm-hmm. Um but if it's for like your own home or you're expecting it to last like 15 to 25 years, it's not going to be in that in that budget range. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but like I said, if it's for a small patch or <clears throat> like I said, if you just want to do it for a room to maybe last a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fine. That's what it's worth. But like I said, if you're looking to invest in your home, it's not going to be in that price range. So you're saying that uh, something that's 149, 249 um in the market and as far as like in the market you're, you're saying it's 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 a low quality product is what you're saying yeah i mean you get what you pay for you mm-hmm, know what i mean mm-hmm. so if you're only paying for 149 249 don't expect the floor to last as good as a floor that you know is going to cost you 399 it'll so last double you, the price you're double saying. the price you know you're mm-hmm. going to get half the quality or maybe even less you know what i yeah. mean you're going to get a wear layer that's probably six mil maybe 12 at max you know but i yeah. see a lot of those products that are 149, they're usually six, eight mil products. Now we're going to compare that to a floor that's 399 that has like a 27 mil. You know, that is like three, four times more scratch resistant, you know, so it should last you three times four or three or four times, you know, than that other floor. Longer. Longer, you know? Okay. So it's because I think that I think the mix up out there right now that I'm seeing is there's a lot of stores and there's a lot of, I'm, and I talk about stores, I talk about everybody wants a good deal, right? Everybody wants a good deal or, or they want the lowest. I think what, what most homeowners, most contractors are thinking about in their head is I want to get the best price, the best product. But I don't think you're able to get the best product usually with the lowest price. No, I mean, that, that's impossible. You know what I mean? It, it's just like anything else. You're never going to get the best quality for the lowest price. It's unfortunate because we would like to always like us as people always want to think that we're getting a deal. But unfortunately, no one's ever going to sell something for less than what it's really worth. You know what I mean? So everything has like, a value is what you're saying. Ha- everything has a value at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Maybe you'll get a small discount, but the product will have a value based off of, you know, the quality or whatever it is, you know, yeah. or if the color is really nice, then that makes it more valuable. That makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, the next question that people are going to want to know is because th- I'm telling you, people are really going in on me on the comments. They're really going in on me and they're saying, why do we sell products at 149 and 249 a square foot then if we feel that it's a low quality product? I mean, our opinions don't matter ultimately to what people are buying. I mean, these are just our opinions. You know what I mean? It's usually like a lot of flippers like to buy the stuff for 149 because mm-hmm. obviously they're going to rip up the carpet, buy the cheapest floor just so they could sell it and make the most on their on the house or whatever. So flippers are usually the ones that are buying that contractors, stuff. contractors or a lot of people like it, it's kind of an unfortunate thing. But like the people that like sign complete contracts with contractors where they're going to buy the floor, they're going to be buying the cheapest floor so they can make the most money on the back end with the customer. And that's kind of the nature of the business. You know, but I mean, you're never going to get the best quality kind of doing it like that. Yeah. So you're saying that the homeowner should go out there and buy the best product possible Uh, and then get a professional to install it is what you're saying. Yeah, I because you're never really knowing what you're going to get. You know what I mean? If you're entrusting the contractor, you know, to give you the best quality thing, he's probably looking after his own pockets, which I mean, that's kind of the name of the game, you know, which you can kind of understand it from the contractor's perspective. But from the homeowner's perspective, you want to get the best bang for your buck. So you should kind of do your own homework mm-hmm. and kind of learn a little bit. Or if the contractor is going to buy something for you, make sure that he's buying something good, you know? And it gets me to that next question. So there's a lot of people that they put all the trust in a designer, 
all the trust in a contractor or even a builder, okay? Yeah. And it, let, let me get into that. So they go ahead and, like you said, they sign a contract or they get, uh, they work together with, let's say, for example, a contractor, and they say, I can install the floor, I can provide the floor, and I could pull up the carpet and do the complete job for $5 a square foot, one price per square foot, right? And they don't, I think the homeowner or whoever's dealing with, if it's a designer or whatever, they don't know what they're going to get. They just think about the $5 a square foot. Yeah. So, and, and let's, let's dig into that. $5 meaning demo what's there, install baseboard, floor, installing the floor, and possibly even painting the house. Yeah. You know, so, and I think those are the situations that homeowners, they fall into thinking that, oh, I'm going to get a good deal, but they don't see all the details in between when it comes to, to, to that. You know what I mean? The thing is, it, it sounds like a good deal, and it sounds easy. You know, you, you pay once, and this guy's going to take care of everything, and, and you have to do less work. You know what I mean? As the homeowner. But you get lesser quality of, of, of product, usually. So if you're willing to kind of go the extra step and kind of play like kind of play like the general contractor, in a sense, and I don't mean to, like, to act kind of like... You're like, saying as a homeowner. As a homeowner. Yes. Yeah, as a homeowner, act a little bit more like a general contractor. And I don't mean to start, like telling what the contractor what to do on install, but I mean to provide their own materials and kind of do their own homework. Yeah, because at the end of the day, it's their house. It's their house. They're it's letting their the contractor dictate the quality of flooring they're going to get. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, and don't get me wrong. There are some contractors that will, will only install good quality material. You know, I've met contractors that say, I will not install LVPs that are less than six millimeters. Like, I've had people mm -hmm. tell me that. Or so, drop lock. Or I've drop. heard a lot of contractors hate drop lock. Yeah, say, no, I don't want that. Yeah. Or I've had customers come and then they, they come and buy a floor here and the contractor was like, yeah, they bought something at Home Depot and I told them to return it because they're like, Dang. because they don't want that floor to fail and yeah. fall back on them and say it's your fault. Yeah. Which ha happens all the time. That is true. That. that is true. Customer will buy like a cheap floor mm -hmm. and then it fails and then they're saying, oh, it's the contractor's fault. But that floor never really had a chance to be successful past four, four or five years. I agree. I agree you know? with you with that. Yeah. And the contractors have been burned by that. And so that, now they're like, I don't, I don't touch that. So they're know? protecting themselves by, by making sure. So th those are the contractors that we, that we, that we look up to because that we value, yeah, that we value because yeah. those kind of contractors, not only are they looking out for themselves to protect the job and the actual floor itself being there for 20 years as, as it's supposed to. And then the, 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 the actual homeowner is being protected by a uh, actual flooring pro telling them, I don't want to install that, yeah. you know, life proof. I don't want to install that PVC core because you know, the, the click systems are flimsy. Yeah. Um, do you remember when I made that video where I was talking about the click systems on the drop lock on it? And it had like this, in like the, this groove indentation the in, in the actual, up. it was popping out. Yeah. Do you remember that video? Yes, I do. So that video, <clears throat> a lot of people watch that video and I have a lot of contractors. I have a lot of retail stores that follow me. Um, and they, they obviously watch my videos and I remember very well a contractor coming in here. It was a local person, a local flooring installer here in Santa Clarita. And he came in and I dropped that video probably a week later. He walks in here and says, my customer saw your video about the click system being a drop lock. He's making me remove all that floor out of the house, making me reinstall e either a unit click, a G5 or a Valange click wow. system. And I was like, oh, dang. Like, and he's like, why are you educating the homeowner? And I said, dude, because you're going to be the one having to deal with the issues in the next two years. Yeah. You're going to be the one dealing with the lawsuit from the homeowner to you. If they can't sue Home Depot, they're going to come sue you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because a lot of manufacturers, like especially the manufacturers that make that kind of cheap stuff, they're really good at like skeeting by their warranty. Yeah, they not, they know how to wiggle the, the, their way out of a warranty, or they know how to deny claims very easily. The yeah. manufacturers, those manufacturers that sell cheap material, that's like their specialty. Oh you man, know? you know what I mean? Oh my goodness, how many claims? And just to, and we're just gonna throw a little bit out there. How many claims have you had from brands in the market? that have nothing but click systems. How, this is the question. How many, how many brands in the market have you dealt with as far as faulty click systems or separation of the floor or the actual click systems breaking and the customers are having nothing but separation, a bunch of separation problems? 
how many claims have been denied by the manufacturer and they don't go and repair the floor or replace all the floors? How many of those have you had? I've only had like two, two floors actually been replaced and all the rest have been denied. Denied? Denied. So, so, okay. So you're saying that there's a lot of brands in the market that are LVP or WPC and they're producing product and they're putting in the market. And most of the ones that you've submitted claims for because the click systems are breaking or whatever... They've denied your claim and said, it's not our problem. It's the installation's fault. I, I've actually been on an inspection. I'll never forget. It was the first inspection I had ever been on and, and kind of as a, a young, you know, kind of newbie into the, the world. And the customer was flipping a house. So he did not have a blinds in front, of the, in front of the window and the sun was hitting the floor. And I remember he came in and said, the floor is warping everywhere. It was a WPC product. The floor yeah. is warping everywhere. Inspector from the manufacturer comes out, goes, looks at everything, and I see him. He's like, I could tell that he believes that the sun is making the floor warp, you know? Yeah. He's like, he goes and starts peeling back baseboards and goes to one, finds one area where the floor is slightly touching the drywall. That's why it's, that's why it's warping. And the guy's like, no, it's the sun. Like, look, look. No, that's why. And, and then he just up and left and then left and then sent a report and that was it. And so, it did, so, so, so the, the, the homeowner customer, got screwed. He got screwed. Damn. And I'll never forget because I was like, man, that's how, that's how it is in this industry with all these, like, with, with some of these companies, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's crazy to see because that guy spent thousands of dollars. And who just, looks bad? Who looks bad in that situation? Is, I, it, is it the manufacturer or is it your face being the person that sold it, the floor to them? It was me because I was the rep for the company that sold the flooring. So it makes me feel bad. And he looks at me, he's like, what do I do now? And I'm like, I can't do anything. Like, if this guy doesn't want to help you, like, I can't do anything. And Dang. it's kind of, it's one of the worst things about being in this industry is kind of having to be the middleman in those claims, you know? Dang. That's, that's pretty cold-blooded. Yeah. That's pretty cold-blooded. And I think that homeowners don't understand that when you buy something from a retail store, for example, a Costco, a, a Home Depot, or a big box store, and they're buying a specific brand, their claims that they're going to have, it won't be directly with the big box store. It's going to be with the manufacturer. Yeah, it's going to be with whoever is distributing that material or producing that material. Dang. So that, that, that's, that's, that's one thing that I've noticed that a lot of people don't pay attention to these little details. And that's why it's important that we talk about this stuff because the end user, the, even the homeowner, the contractor, the, the, anyone that's dealing with the process of buying flooring, they don't understand that that's the type of situations you're going to fall into when you buy a brand that another thing that I've noticed in the market that's happening right now is there's a lot of people. It don't matter where your manufacturer, if it's Cambodia, China, wherever it's being manufactured, if it's Malaysia, uh, India, Mexico, I don't care where you manufacture, but there's a lot of brands that bring their product directly to the retail store and selling it to people at a dollar twenty nine, a dollar oh nine a square foot, right? And I really, I, I really, I, I really trip out on that. I really trip on how those manufacturers come directly to a retail store and try to sell their product at dirt, dirt low prices, right? But no one at that retail store understands the quality they're getting. They just look at the really good price and they don't understand what's going to be the outcome when selling it to the homeowner. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, and, and it kind of sucks because, like, the, it's usually the smaller, like, stores that are going to be selling that kind of material because they're, they're like, oh, look, we can make this much money because this floor cost is so cheap, so we're going to be able to flip it for this much. Yeah. But they're going to deal with the headaches of middlemanning that claim later on, you know? Dang. And we only know this because we've dealt with it. Yeah, like, we've been like, in that position before. And, like, now I, I, I hate selling, like, low-quality material sometimes, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. Because, like, well, what can go wrong? We know? know. The thing is, uh, man, you know, there was a customer that came in here one time. And I think that I'll go to the next question after this. I remember a customer coming in here and they, we have products in here for 149, 269, uh, 199 a square foot. And I remember him coming in here. He's like, oh yeah, you know, um, I noticed you guys sell 199. Like I really like a 199 product. I said, look, if you're installing it in a, in, in a, in a, uh, ADU in the back of the house and someone's going to be living, one person will be living in that back of that ADU, whatever, renting. It's going to last about three, four, three, three to five years. Mm -hmm. Cool. It's going to survive that. It's not going to be that big of an issue. But installing that one product in your whole house, you're going to have a few issues. 
Yeah. And he's like, well, well, I want to install it everywhere. I'm on a budget. I want one ninety nine. And I'm like, I- I'd rather sell you something on sale mm-hmm. that's higher quality for two ninety nine or three twenty nine. Yeah. I get it that it's a whole dollar more, but you know, I'd rather I'd rather sell you something that's better quality. And he's like, I don't have that kind of budget. I said, okay, then then buy that. But I'm giving you a heads up. Yeah. It's not the best quality product I have. And then he's just like, he didn't know what to do because the thing is, I think a lot of people don't think about, uh, a lot of people invest their money into the uh, appliances, the, then they invest all this money into paint and all this other stuff before they worry about the floors. But the floors is the foundation of what you're going to be living on. Wouldn't you want to invest into the floors first? Yeah, I mean, well, not even that. I mean, flooring is, I, don't, I think some people kind of underestimate how expensive flooring can be and especially yeah. how expensive flooring has become in the past five years. Because, yeah, everyone always thinks about kitchen and bathrooms, and those are obviously big-ticket items. But right after that is flooring. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, especially if you're going to be doing your whole house, you're not going to be spending. If you want something good installed out the door, you're probably not going to be spending less than, like, you know, 8 to ten dollars a square foot all said and done yeah install and material install and material yeah. to get everything done the way you want it you know what i mean for something yeah. nice yeah um and i think people want to you know kind of go around that or say oh, where can i save money with this and save money on that mm-hmm. and, and that's kind of where you get that but they're gonna be, they're gonna be dealing with those issues like we said like later on and not too soon later on or not yeah. too later later on I guess. yeah so i'll move on to the next question um why do flooring stores sell low quality products when we know brands are garbage? Um, why why keep certain brands in your store? Okay, so this is the question that I think that a lot of people want us to answer. Um, it kind of kind of goes back to kind of where I started with you. Um, why do certain stores and why do we carry low quality brands uh, and low quality products uh, when we know? That they're trash. Because, well, kind of like we said, we're not the ones buying it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, if you ask us our opinion, like, we're going to tell you what we think about this or what we think about that. Or or even, like, if we don't like a color, we'll be like, I don't like that, you know? Yeah. Um, But if you want to buy it at the end of the day, it's still there. I mean, that's why everything is, like... Everything is out on the market because someone is willing to buy it. You know? When you go to the store, like, not just in Florida, you go somewhere else... And say, oh, that's cheap. Like, I would never buy that. Well, someone will. You know what I You're mean? You're right. You're it's right. It's the same thing with flooring, you yeah. know? Yeah. Like, like sometimes we'll get, like, when we buy some closeouts, you know, to sell for cheap. And I'm like, man, like, who would buy this? Like, I would never buy that. But then that color will be the first one to sell out, you know? Yeah. And I remember, like, I remember one time we bought this, uh, like, really dark floor. And I think we bought it on accident. And I remember I was like, oh, it's not even that nice. And it sold out the first one of all the closeouts that we had bought. Mm. So, you know, sometimes your opinion isn't always like 100% right. That's just your opinion. You know, other people might like it. And that's why it's there. You know? Yeah, yeah. And I think uh, from, my, from my understanding, this, I have a different, a different uh, outlook on why people, um, why I would push and why we continue to, sell or show low quality brands or products i think that the reason why i would i would keep a low quality brand or a low quality product in my store is because there's so many people shopping for price yeah so when you're out there so a lot of homeowners a lot of contractors they're so used to seeing uh low prices being advertised by big box stores so every time someone sees an advertisement on Pandora advertisement, YouTube advertisement, uh, commercial advertising, uh, magazine, wherever you see any advertising happening, it's always about 199, 249, 149. Come here, 49 cents, free installation, free this, free that, free. Th- okay, so that's the kind of marketing that you're seeing. So when that happens, the homeowner or the designer or the contractor, they assume, they assume that the lowest price is what is the market value for a floor. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this is what I think. Because big box stores advertise so low of pricing all the time, and I'm talking, when have you ever, when have you ever seen Home Depot or Lowe's say, now, 
Laminate for $3.99. Laminate for $4.29. Highest quality. You never see that. You always see $1.99. Yeah. Come by laminate. Oh, hardwood floors as low as $1.99. Anyone in the flooring industry that sells floors is always talking about price. How come we never talk about price? I never talk about price. You know why? Because that's not my focus. My focus is not $1.99. And I think that that's what people, that's why people, um, they resonate with us because quality comes first and then let's talk about price. Yeah. I mean, like we're not, we're not selling price. Like we're selling quality. You know what I yes, mean? Yes. Yes. Um, I mean, like we said, we have a couple colors for that price, but like, if you want to go less than one ninety nine, we're not the store for you. Like, unfortunately. You that's know? damn. And, I love the way you said that. And, and Say that again. Say it again. If you want anything less than one ninety nine, unfortunately, we're not the store for you because that's just not our market. And and because us as like a growing company have dealt with the pains of selling cheap material, we don't want to deal with that anymore. Yeah. Let let the big big box stores with the big claims departments deal with that stuff, and we'll focus on selling in what we know is good. You yeah. Know? Yeah. At least that that that's my idea behind it. So so this is a good question because it kind of kind of connects a little bit with that. So. If you if you are if you're if you're a new a new guy, let's say your dad used to be a flooring contractor and you're like, you know what? I don't want to be on my hands and knees installing floors anymore. I want to open my own flooring store. What advice would you give a flooring store owner that's selling price versus quality? Just to be a little careful, you know what I mean? And especially if if you're going to be selling that cheap material, stay away from the install. Like, stay away from middle manning installs yeah. or say that I can help you out with an installer because that's exactly how you're going to get yourself into some trouble. Yeah. You can sell that cheap material, but don't involve yourself with the install at all. Or, or make sure that, hey, you tell the customer, I'm not giving you the warranty. The warranty is through these guys. I'm just selling you the product. Make sure yeah. you clear yourself. And, and even then, like, I think we've seen that when you sell that cheap material, there's – it's not sustainable, like as a as a business model. You know explain I mean? that. Explain that, so they can understand. You you you're 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 a store manager. You understand what we're saying. We're talking about profit margin. We're talking about growing your business, right? Is you're that not going to make about? that much money selling that closeout stuff. You'll make some some money, but you're not going to make the money that you want. You know, because you can only throw so much money on top of a cheap product. Like it has to sell for cheap. So even though you're getting it cheap, you can't maximize the amount of money you're selling for it because that value of that product is really only at max 199. Yeah. So even if you got it for whatever, you can't sell it for more than that. Yeah. But if you have something that's nicer, you'll make a lot more money off of it. Yeah. Granted your sales might be like, you might have less sales, but the quality of the sales are going to be so much higher and everyone's yeah. going to be happier. The homeowner, the business owner and the manufacturer because everything's going to go right usually, you yeah. know? Yeah. For selling the, the cheap stuff, you'll make a little bit of money. Maybe something will go wrong. Maybe something won't. And Who it, wants to live like that? It, it, it's, a, it's kind of like, I don't want to say a sketchy way to do business, but it's a little scary, you know? Yeah. Because Not knowing what's going to happen. It, hopefully this product doesn't cause a claim. Hopefully this product doesn't have issues in the future. And every time you sell that floor or that brand – that low quality product, you're like, oh, I hope, I hope it doesn't come back and bite me in the ass. Or you bought some stuff on closeout and there's something wrong with it, <sighs> and you know there's something wrong with it, and now you can't, you either can't sell it, or you try to like, you know what I mean? And we we've dealt we've dealt with that only because we've been doing flooring or been in the flooring industry for so long. Yeah, you know. Yeah, this this question really uh, got me, and it, it's gonna get, and it's gonna need explanation, and I think that's what it will tie us tie up the, the, the podcast um what's the major difference uh in your professional opinion tony and me right uh what's the major difference between lvp spc wpc at 199 249 and 429 we could start off with, let's start off yeah. with a, let's start off with explaining what a wpc is so what is a wpc to people so they can understand and, and, and let's bring it down let's dumb it proof where a nine-year-old understands what a wpc floor is so a WPC is, it stands for wood plastic composite. So yes. you're normally going to get a, a PVC base core. That's what is PVC? It's plastic. Okay, so plastic. plastic base core with probably a little bit of wood pulp. Depending on what version of that WPC you're getting, maybe it's just pure PVC. Then you're going to get like a layer of vinyl, mm -hmm. your film, and then a plastic on top. 
Um, and it's a plastic, it's a plastic base floor. So it's waterproof. Um, and that was kind of the first generation of the waterproof floor that we kind of know now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and, and for people to understand, we'll talk about WPC and then we'll move on to the next one. WPC comes in different qualities as well. Yeah. So obviously there's different thicknesses, the thickness of the plank as well. Um, you have wear layer, which is the thickness of that clear coat on top. That's basically going to dictate the scratch resistance. Mm -hmm. And then you have, well, the film on top. And that can come in various qualities depending on how high definition you want to get to. And then obviously there's the width and length of the plank. So th those are kind of the main things that you're going to be, or people are kind of focusing on, on mm -hmm. what dictates the quality of a waterproof floor. Yeah. 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 So that's the WPC. And yeah. like you said, when it comes to the, the certain thickness, mm -hmm. it's going to land you at, you can get stuff out there for 199 Yeah, I mean. WPC. We, yeah, we have WPCs like on closeout for 199 in the store. Uh, there's six and a half millimeters. WPCs are generally going to be thicker because yeah. it's a little bit more of a hollow material. Yeah. Um, when we move on to SPCs, we're going to find out like those tend to be thinner, but they're more dense products. Exactly. Exactly. So, so it's a transition like SPC is a stone plastic composite floor. Yeah. So instead of it being mostly PVC, it has mostly stone powder with a little bit of PVC to shape the plank. Those generally will come. I mean, you can get some really thin ones at like four millimeters. You know what I mean? Those yeah. are cheap ones, but you kind of want for SPC, you want to stay at no less than six millimeters, you know? Yeah. And it's fine that those floors, like SPCs, like we said, are generally going to be thinner than WPCs, but that's the nature of that product. Because it's been densified, is what it, you're saying. It's a lot more of a dense product. They can't make it that much thicker yeah. without kind of compromising, like, the rigidity of the floor, yeah. you know? Yeah. Okay. So that's the thing that I think people are still missing. So WPC, now we went into the SPC. The SPC is... A stone, you call it stone plastic composite. I call it stone polymer composite. However you want to say yeah. it, but it's all over the internet. And it's obviously on actual information for what it is. Yeah, you right? can Google it, you know. Yeah. It, the names are used interchangeably. It's the same basic thing. Yeah. So what they did with the, sto with the SPC floor is they took out the actual LVP uh, layer that's on top of a WPC. And they turned it into a stone polymer core. And they just put the film and then they put the wear layer. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because uh, the problem with having that vinyl on top was that it would dent or dimple when you put like refrigerators or gouge or gouge if you put heavy items on it or if you drop something heavy, kind of like sheet vinyl used to. Yeah. So in order to kind of like stop that, you get rid of the vinyl and you make the core underneath a lot stronger. You okay. Know? And that's so, the idea of the SPC. So it so it sounds like uh, it sounds like it evolves. Yeah. Right. So now. You have right now, which is very, very common, and I'm seeing a lot of manufacturers come, in with, come out with it. They're trying to get a composite core. Um, they don't know what to call it anymore. They're starting to call it uh, WPC now, and then they're calling it SPC still. There's just so many brands out there putting 50% plastic, 50% stone powder, and they're calling it a WPC. So I think that that's the confusion that's happening. Yeah. I mean, what do you I, think? I, I've seen a lot of... Like, it's crazy because the, the flooring world is kind of the Wild West, like, when it comes to products because you're going to see products that you've never seen before. Like, I saw a, it was, I think it was a 10 or a 12 millimeter, claimed to be SPC. Yeah. But when you get down to the core of it, it doesn't have much stone powder in it. Yeah. Because it can't. Like, the SPCs, if you want to keep that specific formula, if I think it's, like, I think it's, like, two to two to one mm -hmm. uh, spc to plastic it has to i think it can't really be thicker than eight now i've other i've other seen or i've seen other companies that do something called the um, espc engineered spc where yeah. it'll have a, a layer of vinyl spc then vinyl then film so you're just artificially making it thicker but the product's not really getting better so it's been sandwiched by pvc and then the core has a stone powder is what you're saying yeah but it's still gonna gouge but it's still gonna gouge still gonna dimple um, I think they did that because uh, they were worried about... So the, the, the biggest issue that WPC flooring was having when it was being introduced into the market was, like you said, that the sun exposure was causing the floor to warp and to start noodle up. It started to warp and look like noodling, like just noodles yeah. in your floor. I remember this manufacturer came in with the WPC the first time and uh, we weren't really talking about WPC. It was very new. No one knew what it was. 
and uh, because it was plastic based, like you said, PVC. Um, have you guys, if anyone understands, have you ever left a plastic lawn chair in the middle of the sun in the back of your house, in the front of your house? Have you ever sat in that chair when it was really hot? Yeah. What happens to it? It warps. It just, it, be, it just falls into itself because the, the sun heats the plastic so much that it, it becomes very flimsy. And especially those first generations when no one knew that that was going to be an issue. The thing is when yeah. a product first comes out, they're just like, oh, look at this brand new thing. And then you don't really see the issues until like a year later until everyone starts reporting back all the claims of the sun, like the story that we had talked about and, yeah. and kind of everything else, you know? Yeah. So that's the one thing. And some people say, Roger, your hammer test video isn't a good video. Well, it shows you how strong, how much, how much pressure. You said it in another video. I think the PSI level's really, really high. Yeah. When like, you can literally drive a car on spc and it's not going to get damaged or anything like that you know what i mean yeah so it's it's the it's a matter of putting weight and when we talk about weight and i people i don't think people understand when we talk about why the pressure of someone standing or sitting or laying or sleeping on top of spc versus a wpc or an lvp or whatever people don't understand that Let's say I weigh 150 pounds. My wife weighs 150 pounds. My son weighs another 150 pounds. How much weight is that? Yeah. And then you have these little legs on every, on every side of that couch watching TV or a movie for an hour every single day. And that pressure point where the legs are on, the, on that are going to leave dimples in a WPC. Yeah. And people don't understand that because the material is very, uh, it's very soft. It's soft. And that's why it's going to dimple. That's why it's going to leave, leave indentations in the actual floor. I remember putting a WPC floor when it first came out in my first place mm -hmm. um, that I had. And I remember putting it in. I was so happy it was put in. And when I, when I sold the place and moved out, Tony, I saw the dimples. On the, where the fridge was at. And where everything. the fridge was, the couch. where the couch was, where the bed was. Yeah. Like oh, when, the, when the light hits it, you, could you can see, see the, the indentations little, in the yeah. floor. And, and so it's, I think that's why we, we try to teach and educate that WPC is, is a good product, but isn't the best product out there. And I think that's where people are getting mixed up. Yeah. I mean, it's... The thing is, it's the first generation, so you can never expect it to be the best, you know? Like, as time has gone on, these products have gotten better. Yeah. And not just how they perform, like, in terms of, like, resistance, but, like, how they look, too. Like, the, oh, new, yeah. the new floors, I mean, tell me that when the WPCs were first coming out, they looked... They, they, look, didn't, they didn't look good. They didn't look good. They looked plasticky. And that's why people were still picking laminate at the time. But now that the vinyls and the LVPs have caught up, you yeah, know, to laminate, right. it, it's, it's kind of like half and half again, you know? You're right. I agree with you. I agree with you. So, and people, people that want to know, what is the major difference on a 429 or a $5 a square foot SPC versus a 199 And you don't have to go too deep into it. Just explaining. I think for me to answer it, um, the visuals are a big one. The visuals, and obviously wear layer is very important. Um, but I think that when you buy a product that is in the $5 range or even in the $4 range, you should be getting a nice product. Yeah. You're, right. You're going to get something that looks pretty close to wood, at least now. Like, yeah, the visuals look really good. You're going to get the long plank, like six feet long, uh, nine inches wide, matte finish. Like you're going to get something like what I is matte finish? People don't, I think people, are, people don't understand what that means. What does matte finish mean? Because the biggest downfall to, a, like, a vinyl visually was the plasticky look because it has that wear layer on top. Yeah. It has literally has a layer of plastic. So when the light hits it or in certain settings, like, it looks like plastic. It would shine. It would shine. But now in the past, like, I think, what, a year and a half, two years, mm -hmm. now they look more matte to the point where the light hits it. It's about almost as matte as a real hardwood floor. Almost. Yeah. I'm not yeah. going to say it's as matte, but almost as there. Yeah. Um, and what about texture? Explain that. And the texture will match the photograph. It'll have a embossed and registered texturing. So that means that it's going to match the photograph. So it, it feels like it's real. And even like you can appreciate that stuff when the light hits the floor and you can kind of see that everything looks really nice. You'll get the beveled edges. So it looks more real too. More authentic, like more authentic. It's that authenticity of wood. Yeah. It's not going to look flat. 
Yeah. You know, like, yeah. like a 199 product would. Dang. You, know? you hit it on the head with that one. Like so, a 199 LVP will almost look like sheet vinyl sometimes. Yeah. It will. And, and another thing that I think we haven't talked about is the flat edges. And when we talk about flat, meaning that they butt up to each other and there's no, there's no separation between planks, mm -hmm. making it look like, you know, uh, sheet, sheet vinyl goods, which yeah. is that huge roll that you roll out and it just looks like a picture and a cheap. little bit of a shine on it and that's it. It looks cheap, you know? Yeah. And so, like, like we kind of said in the beginning, for certain settings, you know, mm -hmm. fine. If you want it to last a year, three years, whatever, max, that might be the product for you. But if you're like, if you don't want to do this again, and, and and as for someone that's like renovated their house, it's annoying, like to kind of uproot everything in your house and especially flooring that goes everywhere. You have to move things. If you want to do that again in five years, then go ahead, buy a cheap floor. But if you don't want to do it again, then it's called an investment, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So uh, this is the, 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 the closing, the closing uh, comments. Any advice for any homeowner or flooring store looking or if you're a flooring store selling low prices versus quality? I mean, you could have both, like we said, just stay away from the install when you're selling low quality stuff. When I mean, it comes to a flooring store. When it comes to a flooring store. But then in the homeowner, I, th this is, I think this is what I'm, what I, why I asked that question. Because I think no one understands that low prices, and I'm going to go back again, is low prices and, and, and a nice looking product don't go together. It's like, it's like water and oil. They, they, they don't mix. You're not going to get the lowest price with the nicest looking floor. It's not going to happen. You're not going to get, you're not going to get a, Kia that looks like a Mercedes. You're just not going to get that. Yeah. It's not going to happen. A Mercedes costs $120,000, $200,000. A G-Wagon costs $250,000. When are you going to get a G-Wagon in a Kia? You're ne I mean, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're different levels. So it's like, you know, but that goes along with like everything else too. It's like when you're going to buy like a house, you know, if you have a price range, depending on the neighborhood, like you can only buy a house that's like this. Or if you're able to spend this much, then you're going to get something like this. It's the same thing with everything else in life, you know, yeah. or like if you're shopping for shoes, you know, if you're going to go to like Payless, you're going to get that quality of shoe. Only Payless because, still like, around? Yes. <laughs> it's still around? I think so. <laughs> only because I've bought shoes at Payless. So like I know, you know. Yeah, they will only last usually. I remember buying these shoes now that you got me thinking about it. So you're saying quality matters is it what you're saying. Matter. Quality does you matter. Know, you don't have to spend, go out and spend like the most money, but go out and spend at least a decent amount of money that you feel like it's going to last you, you know, or do your research that when you spend that money, you know that it will last you or just to get what you expect out of the product or expect what you purchase, yeah. you know? Yeah. Because the last thing you want is to spend, you know, a certain amount of money thinking it's going to last you this and it like cuts down in half. You know, what about the what about the homeowners that are out there shopping and let's say that the retail store and this is where it gets tricky as a retail store st or as a retail store owner can do things like this. And you tell me if I'm wrong, you can buy a product at one twenty nine and flip it and sell it for four dollars a square foot to try to prove that it's obviously a high quality product because the price is high. Right. But whose job is it? to research the product and know if it's really worth four dollars it's the customer's job because ultimately it's your money and as as much as i like to like say oh like like people like because i work at a flooring store like i don't lie or like i like to think that i don't lie you know to customers but it's ultimately up to the customer's job to make sure that whatever they're spending their money on is going to be worth it just like anything else like if you're going to buy a car you should probably do some research on what you're expecting out of the car like mm-hmm you know, mm -hmm. how many miles per gallon yeah. or, or whatever, whatever. Or if it's a used car, get the Carfax or whatever, you know? Yeah. So it's ultimately always up to the customer's, like, job to do their due diligence, I guess, unfortunately. Yes. yes. You know, because yes. you can't really trust everyone out there. Um, yeah. And, the, and, and I've talked about this in other videos. Not every flooring store is a flooring pro. They, they're not. They're not. And I've been in this industry for Man, on my way to 20 years, and I've met a lot of people that own a flooring store. 
And just because they have a florist store doesn't mean they know everything about florists. No, because it's, I mean, maybe it sounds simple to us to just kind of to sell floors because it's what we do and, and there's money in it. You know, kind of like what you had said in, in one of your videos, like there's money in it to be made. And because people think, oh, it's easy money. I can just get this for this and it's quick, quick money. There's more that goes into that, you know, and. And sometimes I think you need to know a little bit more before you dive into something like that. Yeah. You know, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And I think that's what separates the, the best, the best knowledgeable. And I'm, I'm talking about like, that's what separates a great store from a flooring store that's just there. And having the knowledge, teaching the homeowner, teaching the contractor, teaching the person walking the door, understanding the difference between a WPC and SPC, uh, uh, actual solid LVP, um, Knowing the difference, I think that's what makes the difference in being an actual flooring store and just a pop-up flooring store, you know? Yeah, yes, but then you can always tell, like, the thing is everyone's always pushing something different. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like you can go and educate the customer based off of what you know, but then a customer will go somewhere else, and because maybe because they stock WPC or, or they're, they're heavy into laminate, they're going to tell, no, this is crap and this is crap because... I've had customers tell me I've gone to like four different stores and everyone tells me something different. Yes, you this know? is true. This and is and true. it, it kind of makes it hard because they don't know who to believe, you know? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, like you're just a guy at a store. Like they, there's yeah. no reason for them to like ultimately really trust you. You know what I mean? Especially yeah. when they've gone to other stores and everyone's saying something different, you know? Yeah. So it does. it is kind of hard to get a customer to to believe the correct information. It is tough. It is you tough. Know? Um. I think like what you've said in, in the last, uh, you, there was another podcast we had. You said, you know, you know that you're offering the best price. You know that you're educating them the best that you can. And at the end of the day, if you're genuine and you're actually trying to help them instead of just taking their money because they like that great floor and you just want to sell it, they can sense that. Yeah. And you got to trust in the homeowners, trust in the designers that when you're giving them this information that they're going to come back to you. Because you really know your stuff. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of the times, like in those small flooring stores, they want the sale now. And it's not yeah. always about that because a customer might walk through the door and they're not ready to buy. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. You know, and you just need to, sometimes they're walking through the door just looking for some guidance and looking for some help and they're not going to buy right now. That's fine. You know, yeah. but a lot of the small link stores, they're not going to help you if you're not going to be buying right now. Mm -hmm. And I know that because... That's kind of the, the general vibe you get from those smaller flooring stores, you yeah, know? Yeah. And they're not going to be willing to, to give out the information or they don't know the information. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think to, to, to finalize this, people need to get educated more and more and watch content like us. Go on forums about flooring and learn the difference between SPC, WPC, and truly learn the differences. Because if you don't learn self teach yourself teach yourself yeah because you you're saying that everyone in the industry is telling them different stories about flooring and what's the best and what's not the best and all this stuff go do the research yourself test out the floors hammer the floor with the hammer like i did learn the difference so you can see what makes sense for your lifestyle yeah you know what i mean um but uh uh tony i appreciate you coming in again and being here with me and everyone watching I hope you guys enjoy the content, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. All right. Peace.